this lesson, we are going to take another look at converting percents to fractions to decimals and converting fractions to decimals. This is a review of some previous posts, and we have a kind of a review worksheet set up here. And if, if you're copying this down at home, you know, feel free to pause it anytime, copy it down, and try it by yourself. So here we go. This is the Show What You Know quiz review. Directions. Convert the following percents into fractions and decimals. With a bonus of simplifying the fractions that you come up with. And they are listed right there for you. One through five. And then we have directions converting the following fractions into decimals. And that's the last part of the little quiz here. Questions six through ten. All right, so let's begin. Once again, we're going to convert percents to fractions to decimals and then simplify. First one, we have 25%. And like we talked about before, 25% means out of 100. Well, percent, the word itself means out of 100. So that's really 25 out of 100. And if you read that fraction, you know that it, it's 25 hundredths. And if you listen carefully, you hear the fraction converted to a decimal right off the bat it, because it's said the same way. 25 hundredths would look like this. We have 2 in the tenths place and 5 in the hundredths place, making 25 hundredths. And if you think about money, that's 25 cents. Now, if you wanted to simplify for those bonus points, We've got the fraction 25 out of 100. And you can think to yourself, well, what can I divide both of these by to get it into simplest form? And you could divide by TCF, sure. That's the, we've done a post on that. So you could come up with the factors of 25 and the factors of 100. And you'd find that the greatest common factor is the numerator itself. So that's 25 divided by. 25, and what you do to the numerator, you must do the, to the denominator. You've heard me say that many times before in all our fraction posts, or many of them at least. So that turns out to be 25 divided by 25 equals 1 for our numerator, and 100, 100, I'm sorry, divided by 25 equals 4. And there you go. You have that fraction in simplest form. Number two, 50 percent. Again, percent means out of 100, so 50% equals 50. Out of 100. And then if you read that fraction out loud, 50 hundredths, well, you hear that decimal, don't you? So it's 50 hundredths, and yes, that zero really is optional. So you could say this two ways. You could say 5 tenths, or you can include it all, 50 hundredths. 50 hundredths. Now, the task of simplifying that fraction. We've got 50 hundredths equals, now we have to reduce this. Now, you could do that trick where you reduce by, you know, getting rid of a zero in the numerator and the denominator. You could really just know that that is like saying divided by 10. So if you divided 50 by 10 and 10 or 100 by 10, you would get 5 tenths. And at that point, you might be saying, okay, 5 tenths. Well, I know that 5 can be divided by 5 and also 10 can be divided by 5. So if you look at that 50 divided by 5, I bet you were thinking, hmm, I know that one. Let's see, 50 divided by 5, what would that be? Hmm. Oh, back up a second. Yep, I got rid of those zeros. Sometimes that trips us up a bit. And um, it would be actually 5 divided by 5. And that would be 1. So like I said, the 5 divided by the 5, I almost made that mistake. It's always good to check your work, so I'm glad I checked. So 5 divided by 5 equals 1, and now we're dealing with this 10 divided by 5 equals 2. I bet you were thinking that too. And really an overall rule, you had 50 hundredths. Anytime the numerator is half of the denominator, 
or you multiply it by 2, you get the denominator. And tell me that happens, it's always equal to 1 half. Number 3. Now we've got 75%. 75%, again, percent means out of 100, so you can simply think that 75 out of 100, if you can read the fractions that way, that would be an equivalent fraction. So we've got 75 hundredths, and I just said the name of that fraction, and it kind of gives us that decimal, 75 hundredths. There you go. Let's simplify this fraction. We've got 75 out of 100 equals, okay, 75 and 100. Well, I know, dealing with money and quarters and dollars, I, I know that a quarter for, a quarter's worth 25, and three of those would be 75. Four of them would be a dollar. So both of these could be divided by 25. So we've got 75 divided by 25. Well, a quarter goes into 75 cents three times, so that would be three if you're thinking that good for you. Now, 100 divided by 25, it's like saying how many quarters goes into a dollar. Well, that would be four, wouldn't it? So there you go. That's in simplest form as well. Three fourths. Let's move on. Number four, 80%. 80%. 80 percent. 80 percent. 80 out of 100 is our fraction, isn't it? There we go. And that would equal 80 hundredths, the decimal. Once again, that could be 80 hundredths. That's a zero up there. 80 hundredths or just simply 8 tenths. Now to simplify the fraction. 80 hundredths. I'll try to be more careful this time when I eliminate those zeros. Well, why don't we take the longer route then? To avoid that fusion. So let's divide by 10. You know, we have a 0. 80, 80 is divisible by 10. And 100 is divisible by 10. So we would really, in essence, you know, we're getting rid of those zeros. And our new fraction would be 8 tenths, which is an equivalent fraction. So now we have 8 tenths. Well, I know something about even numbers. And if they... if in the ones place, there is a 0, 2, 4, or 6, or 8, and then it must be even. And those are always divisible by, you probably guessed it, 2. What I do to the numerator, I must do to the denominator, so I divide both by 2. 8 divided by 2 equals 4. And 10 divided by 2, 5. Good for you if you were thinking that. So there you go. 80 hundredths in lowest terms, simplest form would reduce down to four fifths. There you go. The next one, number five. Eight percent. Percent meaning out of a hundred would simply tell you that eight percent means eight out of a hundred. And if you read that decimal aloud, you also hear the you hear that if you read that fraction aloud you also hear the decimal form. So we've got Eight hundredths. You got to be trick. Uh, you got to be careful because this could be a little tricky. Here, eight hundredths. So there would be no tenths. There would be zero tenths. That zero holds the place of the tenths. There would be eight hundredths. That's what you would have. Now to simplify this one, let's take a look at eight hundredths. Well, I'm thinking about the factors of the 8, honestly. I'm thinking 1 times 8 is 8. 2 times 4 is 8. And basically, that's the factor. Well, I know 4 is a factor of 8, and 100 divides nicely by 4. So let's try that. We'll divide the numerator by 4, and the denominator by 4. So 8 divided by 4 is 2, because 2 times 4 is 8. And 100 divided by 4, if you're thinking about in terms of dollars, a dollar divided by 4, would, or 100 cents divided by 4, would give you 25 cents. Look at that. There is your fraction in lowest terms. 
All right, now I'm going to bounce back to the original page and go over the directions again. It's always good to read the directions to know what your job is. So the directions are for the second half of this quiz, convert the following fractions into decimals. So let's jump ahead to number six, which is four eighths. There it is. So if you remember, I've said many times in our in previous posts that every fraction can be read as a division problem. And you read those top down, we've got four divided by eight. So it's numerator divided by denominator. So we've got four divided by eight. And you, you won't be able to do that without getting into decimals. And that's, that's what we're trying to do here. So that works out just great. All right, so eight goes in the four. Well, not really. It doesn't go in um, a whole number of times. So we have to go into decimals, which are numbers less than one. And let's see, eight goes into 40. I can see that. Eight goes into 40 ah, five times. Isn't that convenient? Five times eight equals 40. We subtract, get zero. You could bring down this zero. And then well, we could stop at five tenths. If you want to take it into uh, hundredths, if you're dealing with money, you might want to do that. So eight goes into zero, zero times. Zero times eight equals zero. Subtract, you get zero, and you are done. So four eighths equals five tenths or 50 hundredths, 50 cents if you're dealing with money. So if you had, for example, $4 up here in the numerator, and you want to divide it evenly among eight people, each person would receive 50 cents. So and sometimes connecting the money helps, uh, you know, bring more meaning to what you're doing. All right, so here we go. Number seven, one twentieth. Ooh, that's a good one. Reading that fraction fraction as a division problem, we've got one divided by twenty. You're probably thinking ahead and thinking, well, twenty doesn't go into one, so we have to go into the decimal. We'll represent those tenths and hundredths places with zeros for now. So 20 goes into 1. Well, no, not really. So let's go 20 goes into 10. Oh, that doesn't really work either. So that would be 0 times. So 0 times 20 would be 0. We subtract. 10 take away 0 would still be 10. And now we have to bring down this 0 making 100. Now we look at that divisor of 20 and think, okay, 20 goes into 100 ah, five times. Five times 20 equals 100. Subtract, get zero. And you are left with an answer of five hundredths. So five hundredths is equal to 120. 120th, I'm sorry. Like again, if you connect that to money, one twentieth of a dollar would be a nickel because it takes 20 nickels to make one dollar. So there you go. It's like five cents, five hundredths. Number eight, one half. This is a common fraction, benchmark fraction. I did post about one half as a benchmark fraction. You can check that out if you're interested. Now we want to turn this into a decimal. So let's see. I'm reading that fraction as a division problem. Numerator divided by denominator, 1 divided by 2. Speed up a little bit. You're probably getting good at this. Good for you. So 2 goes into 1. Well, not really. Uh, we could put a 0 there, but let's move on. 2 goes into 10. 5 times. 5 times 2 equals 10. Subtract. You get 0. Bring down this 0. 2 goes into 0. 0 times. 0 times 2 equals 0. Subtract get zero, and there you go. And look at that. One half in decimal form would be five tenths or fifty hundredths. Again, if you're talking about money. Look at back at number seven. That was worth a nickel. And our previous one of that, four eighths, which is also an equivalent fraction to one half, is equal to 
50 hundredths. Look at that. Pretty cool. All right, number nine. Two fifths. This fraction uh, viewed as a division problem would be two divided by five, whereas five goes into 20. Four times, I bet you were thinking that. Good for you, because four times five equals 20, doesn't it? And then we'll subtract. It's zero. Bring down that zero. Again, five goes into zero. Zero times, zero times five equals zero. Subtract, get zero. And you're left with 40 cents as your answer up there. So, uh, two-fifths is equal to four-tenths or 40 hundredths. 40 cents if you're thinking about money. If you had two dollars divided by uh, amongst five people, each person would get 40 cents. Number 10, two-thirds. Ah, a rather tricky one. It's a little bit different. How refreshing, huh? So two divided by three. All right. Three goes into 20. Hmm, three times six is 18. That would work. 20 take away 18. We would have to regroup over there, borrow a little bit there. So 10 take away 8 is 2. 1 take away 1 is 0. Bring down the 0. And we get 20 once again. Uh-oh. 3 goes into 26 times. 6 times 3 is 18. Do you see a pattern going on here? Do you see what's happening? 20 take away 18 equals 2. And then if we had to tack on another 0 to represent the thousandths place, we could do that. But you see... That's continuing. And you're going to, it'll continue on, and you'll see that you get six repeating over and over again. I'm not going to go through that, because we could actually keep doing that forever, infinitely. So we'll just take that first six, show that it's repeating, and be done with it. And there is the answer to that problem. Six tenths, where the six is repeating. Point six repeating, there you go. And that is the end of the show what you know quiz review I'm dealing with converting percents to fractions to decimals simplifying a little bit in there and converting fractions into decimals thanks for checking out mr merrick's edu blog and we'll see you again next time